Montana around his Gulf Coast district as he met with constituents and federal and local officials to discuss the response to the oil spill. Coast Guard Admiral Thad Allen and EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson are among those with whom he met. This is about 25 minutes. Right now we were having problems and I'm out, out, out with, but the oil was coming off the mouth of the Mississippi and coming through these passes, which are all open, and it would come into the inner waters right here. When they were having trouble deploying assets in Terrebonne from the eastern side of the Mississippi to the western side, uh, it was too late a response in order to get all this done at that time. Uh, now, thankfully, they've deployed people all in this area. The response is substantially better. They have some jack-up barges that are out in our area, and uh, it's done substantially better. And the number of manpower and assets deployed have gotten significantly better over the last two to three weeks. And, and you say this has gotten better over the last couple of weeks. What were the effects of it being slow in the first well, the couple of weeks? Well, the effects were that we had sightings and the response was way too slow. We'd see some oil coming into our parish one day, and it was the next day before they would even respond to look at it. And they didn't have the assets or people to actually do the response. And by that, right now, if we see one, and uh, they send skimmers and, and other uh, SCAT teams in order to actually make certain that we are being protected. We haven't lacked for uh, people that know how to close the hole, people that know how to disperse the, the oil, people who know how to save the marsh. Uh, trust me, we have not lacked for that, have we, Michelle? Not at all. And, but the problem that we run into is the implementation. There's so many people, and of course, it's a matter of are connecting the right people with the uh, uh, right resources, mm -hmm. and that's basically it. But what Congressman Mellison says is exactly correct. Are you pleased with the federal government's response now? I mean, uh, was it all slow in the beginning? Is it? Can I suggest this? They'll be tripling our assets. The thing, and, and this is me, and this is not for Congressman Melanson, but what's going to hurt Terrebonne Paris the worst right now is the moratorium and the, the ban on drilling. Mm -hmm. uh, please understand that Terrebonne has worked with the oil field and and the seafood industry for years. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go from seafood to oil field, oil field to seafood. And right now, the economic impact on the fishing industry is survivable. BP has been coming in and making claims. We, we believe that the response is getting to be uh, better, that we think that there's an at least if they can cap it, that there may be some hope for the future for our fishing industry. Our biggest problem right now is the all uh, field ban where they've uh, discontinued drilling and like that's... 500 feet. 500 feet is the, is the minimum uh, that they, I mean the maximum, maximum that they're letting and we had somebody that was at a thousand feet uh, drilling in a thousand feet of water the other day. They only had two thousand feet left to go and they were told to cease and desist. All these rigs are very expensive. The horizon was $500,000 a day. There's no way that it's going to be sitting around for uh, six you know, months. six months. And what's going to happen, they're going to actually go to other countries. Once they're there, they're not going to move back at the end of six months. It's going to be a horrendous impact in our area. And uh, right now, easily, uh, we're going to have many, many thousands of people that will be impacted. And I'd be willing to bet that at least 60% of my parish, and I have 120,000 people, are directly or indirectly affected by the oil field. And 60%? 60, that's what I would think. I would guess that would be. Meaning yeah. employed? Or Families employed? Directly or indirectly. Okay. Understand they have oil field people that work on the rigs, they have boat companies, they have catering companies, they have fabrication machine shops, yards. fabrication yards that build the uh, rigs. All of this is going to come to a screeching halt and there is, and, and this is the critical thing, with BP or the, the spill, they have a, a resource to go to. On this moratorium, it's not compensable by anybody. So this is a loss that we're going we're gonna to have and this the oil field drilling is without question a, 
such a significant problem that it will affect my community and my parish more at this time than the oil spill will. We'll have to find go around here that works. We just left Homa. Uh, and of course we're over here in Terrebonne Parish and we are going south on Highway uh, 56 to Cocodry, which is the end of the road in Terrebonne Parish in the coastal marshland. land. Uh, there's a couple of marinas and jump off points for oil and gas service industry companies. And um, uh, also down here is Lumcon, which is Louisiana uh, University Marine Consortium. Uh, facility that's um, uh, right before you get to the end of the road down here. And can you just point out on there like, areas that have been hardest hit? By well, well, Grand Isle, Grand Isle has been getting uh, oil on the beach. Uh, right past Grand Isle is Port Fouchon, which is getting oil on the beach. And they're starting to get some oil showing up on the barrier islands that are out below Pelto and uh, Timbalea Bay, Terrebonne Bay. Um, these coastal islands and of course we're getting some over in the mouth of the river as the crow flies you can see that's not very far. Right. Um, How many miles is that you think? Oh uh, I don't know the exact mileage and I'm gonna say probably Port Fouchon to the mouth of the river 25 miles you know is, is a guess. Um, when, when you hear about oil getting into the marshes where is that happening? That's happening at the mouth of the river, uh, by Southwest Pass and Pass Alute. It's, um, they're getting some sheen into the inner marsh in Barataria Bay, up to what they call Myrtle Grove, which is up here. And you see a lot of that white is now no longer there. It's been eaten away. We've talked about coastal erosion, and um, we're getting erosion of a lot of these wetlands and marshes. So they're, they're putting booms out in this interior marsh, trying to protect the estuaries where shrimp and fish lay their eggs and, and, and such as that. So, uh, and then of course over on the east side of the river into Terrebonne and, and um, Terrebonne, into St. Bernard and, and Plaquemines Parish on the east side, uh, they're concerned with all the wetlands that are up in here. Lake Bourne's still open to fishing. Lake Catherine's still open to fishing. Uh, and, but as you see, you've still got some protection. Now, that oil is collecting on Chandelier Island. If it keeps going like that, it'll get up in the north end and it'll start getting into those lakes from the backside. So that you, you don't know where the tide's going to take this stuff. And would you just point out New Orleans as a reference point? New Orleans is right here on the north end of all of it. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Sir Ann's in charge here from the Coast Guard side. Okay. She's the federal on scene coordinator's representative. The administrator's on her way and should be here within the next 10 minutes, and Admiral Allen should be here as well. Where, where were we supposed to go? And where are we headed? We are actually headed up to C5. We have the room secured up there. Okay. For enough room to occupy everyone. So okay, have you seen Johnny Glover around this morning? No, I believe my son is here. Michael? Okay. Yes. He, uh, Mr. Glover is actually here today with oh, his wife. Okay. okay. I spoke to them with the arrangements sure, for dinner. Sure, too. All right. I'll catch up to him at some point in time. Lead the way, hey guys. All right. Hello, sir. How are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, uh, making it. It's in uh, the rain. You got you, got you stranded down here? Or? I so. Oh, Simon here for, till further notice. Oh, it's all closed down and I'll wish, though. That's your wish. Hi, right, folks. How are we doing? Hello. week and a half we made a number of significant changes and we're dealing with the parishes and how we're doing with the port operating basis trying to push authority out for boom deployment and being more responsive uh, just generally tell me how it's going it's actually going really well i think we have a great relationship with the eoc right now 
and working hand in hand. We have, I know we have a rep down there, and we also have Mr. David Hodge down here working with us. And with the booming operations, we have quite a bit of our ACP DRP sites already covered, and now we're considering all our alternate booming strategies to ensure that what we're doing is is right on. Okay. So instead of some of the uh, exclusion booming that we have from the islands, maybe now switching to diversion and collection. Okay. Uh, how about boom supply? We're good. We get trucks in every day. Okay. Constant. All the types you need. Yes. Okay. You're getting, a, you're getting the, hard, the solid boom as well as the uh, sorbent. Yes. Okay. And do you have any requirement for the larger boom? I would think back here you probably don't need the open ocean 48 inch at all. Uh, we're actually we're thinking about requesting mm -hmm. some of the larger boom. Okay. Switching that out on some of those islands and the barrier islands that we have. Is that just to uh, reduce the amount of maintenance and increase, increase yes, the survival? Yes. We are boom maintenance every single day. Hanging in there. Yeah. So hi, hi, Anne Marie Rager. Nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? Hi, Mr. Jackson. How are you? My plan actually, we wanted, we wanted to make sure that we're going to actually try and go down and actually do a tour of the, of the stage here. Right. And, and the crews are looking forward to seeing it. Good. So Good. So I'll give you a couple more. Minutes. Thanks. We're just doing kind of a how goes it here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, just trying to get a, get caught up on there. I, uh, you know, the what I'm getting from Terrell Parish, I haven't been down to. Uh, Grand Isle since last Friday, mm -hmm. and Charlotte uh, was down there uh, with, from Lafourche Parish, mm -hmm. and of course Paul was there concerned about what we're hearing, the dispersing stuff, and we can talk about that some too. Sure. Uh, but what I'm hearing from the parish uh, here in Terrebonne mm -hmm. is that it looks like they've kind of gotten caught up and they're moving quite well. And I, so. I was at Lafourche this morning yeah. before the weather blew in. They got a little, a few places they couldn't quite get to, but they feel caught up and they got double boom in those places. That's near boom. Yeah. They're pretty good. How are they standing on boom over there, did they say? They had some uh, lined up to be used, and then they had uh, they had plenty on the beach that wasn't, you know, was far from soil. They felt pretty good. But I didn't see soil. She got caught up. Yeah, yeah well, that's why there's a lot of snare boom over there, pretty effective. Yeah, it is effective. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. That's one of the most effective uses of that boom I've ever seen. Okay. What, no, what, what, um, I, I see boom. That's all I see. No, no, no. It's like pom-pom. It's a bunch of pom-poms yeah. strung together. Right. Oh, really? Okay. It's just what a bunch of fibers. Yeah. And okay. As a way he's washing it out, it just... That it those, is that the green the, the green stuff? Well, it's all different colors. Okay. Okay. What happens okay. in the oil just adheres to it, just soaks it all up, and you just replace it, put some more out. Cool. It's very effective over there. Okay. Actually, I saw... Um, That's what I showed the president the other day when we were down at the... Uh, okay. I looked at waste disposal, and when you see that stuff as they pull it out, all you see is the the brown. You know, you can't even see it in there. That's how much it picks up because it's just the fibers and the surface area is so great, and that all just sticks. To it. it's, it's basically pom poms tied to a rope. I don't know who thought of it, but boy, it's <laughs> no. I said all the people who talk about uh, uh, human hair, they should see these because yeah, they're the like snare high tech. Yes. I wasn't got a haircut too. <laughs> 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 yeah. Wasn't enough there to give to anybody. Oh, no. uh, we've been talking on the phone. You want to bring the congressman up speed on dispersants at all? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. The um, I, I feel comfortable knowing that we've made it clear to BP we don't want them sprayed. We don't want to see any spraying unless it's absolutely necessary. They've been doing a lot more burning. We've been doing a lot more uh, skimming and uh, uh, booming in containers. The one for, and, and they're supposed to cut down the use of it. So they're using less than 15,000 gallons a day in the subsurface. And we're monitoring that very closely. Toxicity tests, dissolved oxygen tests, uh, and uh, everything there looks good. In fact, the toxicity tests look, I would actually say, very good. You know, How down. deep are we going down? All the way to the Five thousand. Okay. Run! So, 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 so we're seeing guys. <laughs> Um, I'm going to do it right now. She, she, uh, she 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 uh, yeah, I could use a little bit of rest. Yeah, you, you look like the stress is uh, well, taking a few well, hours, too. It, it, well, actually, I was feeling like it was going, but that was because all the meat is peacefully laid. I'm looking for you to join. Okay. 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 Is this snare booming here? 
By a rope, and like you every just, strand is almost like a piece of hair. And you string it down the beach, and actually, sometimes it becomes half embedded or buried, and that's still okay. And you just lay there until it turns completely brown, you rip it up. It's got to go to, to, go to a, a disposal site. Yeah, what are they doing? And you with replace this stuff? it. Is the state responsible for this? No, state, yeah, the state has been uh, put together a waste disposal plan. I looked at them this morning. They're putting it into a roll off dumpster. It's lined with plastic. They take that, they take it all up, and then they take it to a bunch of landfills all on. Yeah, the, oily debris, as you know, is considered hazardous waste, right. so you have to have a debris disposal plan as well. Well, actually, we have two types. We have the, the actual oil is exempt yep. waste. And we can put that into a special land. Right. But the state's been real clear that they want to see that handled with the assumption that's happening. So let's right. just give some scale. Okay. Good. How are we doing? Cool. All right. That's the name. <laughs> so, why don't you give an overview? Actually, there's an ACP one. There's actually a better one I'm already using. Please, so why don't we come down here and do a little update? Hang on just a second. Go ahead. These are the bare islands that we are attending to right now, every day, um, with the boom maintenance and boom tending. All of our GRP sites are outlined right here. Effectively, right now, we have kind of an east operations that's going all the way up here in our west operations. And, and then we have skimmers, which we're positioning between the islands every day, as well as in a set course through the bay, um, coming there and back. And we are also now working um, with Kwanishing right up in here with the, uh, the local Indian tribes to protect their burial grounds. That's Chittimaka, correct? No, it's uh, homeless. Homeless, okay. But actually, it's a combination of the, the Punishan and uh, homeless. Okay. One of the um, important things I saw yesterday, Admiral, it was really impressive to me in Homa was all the pre-assessment work that happens on these shorelines yep. to get ready. So that not only um, are we responding to what happens when the oil, you know, God forbid, hits the shore, but we have a good picture of the before. So we know what baseline. we want after. We have a great baseline. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I've seen in a couple of places is getting it's people out there picking up debris. So you're not dealing with oil and debris. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, so a good reason for everybody to clean up their beaches. Hey, clean up your beaches. We don't like that's litter at the EPA. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Very good. And of course, this connects over to uh, the people at the Fort Jashan okay. and La Fouche Paris. So that's the next step. Yeah. Okay. What's your uh, battle rhythm here like? Uh, you know, when do you, when you change the watches and how many people are on at night and all that kind of stuff? We kick off every day at 0600. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we didn't start off at 0600. It uh, runs to 6 o'clock. So everybody's running 12 on 12 on? 12 mm -hmm. on 12 on. Okay. Um, basically, uh, night shift, we got them out there readdressing the vessels, putting boom on per the strategy we have. So first thing in the morning, the boats are ready to go. All the captain's got to do is do their manifest, jump on the boat, and away they go. That's actually nice shift that's running a, logistics getting yeah, ready. That, to go. that picked up our response time as far as leaving the docks and addressing the demand. Yeah, that's the whole thing. I was in we, I've been hitting all these places and I want to make sure everybody understands personally from me. That's where you need to feel empowered here. <laughs> uh, reducing that cycle time from the sightings first made until we achieve the effect. Even if the effect is that it's not oil, mm -hmm. that we know that and have done something about it. Yeah. And that's moving people closer to the problem, but it's also giving people down here the authority to do what they need to do. And I, we, we're trying to take a lot of uh, decision-making authority that's been done at the, uh, at the ICP and HOMA and giving you down here. So do you think you got it? Yeah. We do. We All right. It. And they did what oh, I told man. them to do. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We're going. All right. All right.
It's not for me to make that ask. Um, the ask is if, if one of the parish officials tells me he's not happy with something, then I've got an ask I need to make. And what I've told Charlotte, what I've told um, uh, Michelle, what I've told Billy, what I've told uh, Craig DeFaro, uh, what I've told Steve Terrio, is if you've got something and you're not feeling you're getting response, uh, call me and I will make a call. Uh, now, I, I did call in and I talked with Rahm Emanuel at the White House. Uh, and now that I've had this meeting with um, uh, Thad Allen and with um, uh, Lisa Jackson, uh, I think I'm going to, uh, I'm trying to find a balance on the deep water drilling between spill baby spill and drill baby bill, uh, a drill. Um, we've got to make sure that there's a conscious effort for safety. We can't have this happen again, uh, but at the same time, the economic impact down here uh, in this region. I, I think it will devastate Louisiana's economy. And we were one of the bright spots in the economy. Uh, I mean, we've been, the, especially at home of Thibodeau, it's been the lowest unemployment rate in the country now for a long, uh, probably two years. Yeah. So with fishermen now out of, out, out of, out of work, uh, marinas and ice houses and shrimp processors, and, uh, I mean, if it wouldn't be for all the stuff that's going on here, because it's built, uh, the, all the marinas would probably suffer. And I don't think, you know, Johnny's, because of his location, is probably doing better than the rest of them. Uh, but that doesn't take care of the rest of them. And if you go on Grand Isle, that's like a ghost town. And from Memorial Day on, that's usually when they make their money. So you've got the shrimpers aren't making their money, you've got the motels aren't making their money, the restaurants aren't making their money, the grocery stores. And then, of course, the oil companies with the, the drill stuff, that's, that's a whole other issue. All right, anyway, we gotta go. All right. Thanks, Thanks sir. What did you get out of this meeting today with uh, Thad Allen and Well, Jackson? it's mostly just getting updated on where they are. Uh, the meeting that was the most important to me was sitting down with Michel Clode. I need to know that he's feeling better. Uh, if he's feeling better, then I'm feeling better. Uh, we're still not, it's not a perfect world. We're not getting everything that we'd like, obviously. But as I, I mentioned to Matt just a minute ago, this right now is we're in a response mode. Uh, the oil has not come into this area. Uh, we're watching for it at the Barry Islands out there and those areas. Once they see it, then they deploy. Uh, right now, they've deployed where they need to or where they're feeling they need to, and then they're poli policing the boom because we've got to con continue the uh, uh, making sure that the integrity of the boom is there wherever it's been put up. And so it's, it's going to be an ongoing process. And as long as that thing's pumping oil, um, who knows how long this is going to go. So what do you tell your constituents on a daily basis when you see them around? The only thing I can do is, you know, keep your chin up. Uh, if you're out there working, laying boom, uh, I don't have to tell you anything. I know you're doing it because your heart's in it and not because there's a check from it. Uh, although that check is important right now with people out of work. So, uh, But this is about saving an area, you know, that we love. As I've told people, I've, I grew up hunting and fishing down here. Um, all my life I've fished out of, out of uh, Coca Marina. Uh, Johnny Glover and I served in the state legislature together. I know his politics, he knows my politics, but one thing we do agree on is the saltwater marshes, the estuaries, uh, preservation of the coastal wetlands, um, uh, and conservation for the fisheries. And, uh, you know, we, don't dip, we don't differ with one iota on any of that. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay.